Eternity's holy king. Blessed are you, O Lord, our Lord, whose words brings up the evening. Huh? And I speak to you the same way, even if your situation does not match what I said. You can't say what I said is a lie, because it came from God. The same way if I speak and it's not from God, even if what I say is accurate, God calls it a lie. It is not the correctness of the information that makes it truth or lies. It is the source that delivers it. Apostasy. Given to the doctrine of demons. Now, let me talk very briefly on how God deals men. Still on apostasy and show you where some of these errors come from. Praise the Lord. Now, listen to me. You see, when... Can I use you? Can I use any, any two gentlemen or anybody in the congregation? Just two, two of you. Come. Thank you. Please stand here. Stand here. Watch this. Now, do you know that when we start our walk with God... Pastor Shola, God bless you, sir. Let's honor him. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Now, watch this, please. Remember our topic. What could be wrong? We're examining the factors that inhibit our rising to our full spiritual potential. And one of it we are looking at is the concept of apostasy, a deviation from the patterns of God. Do you know that if these two believers start their Christian experience, now they don't know what they are going to become. It does not yet appear. So we all start the same. Are we together? Now say this man is called into the prophetic ministry. And this guy is called into say um, the academia. When both of them start with God, they are praying, they are going to church. There is a level they will get to. There will be a spiritual divergence. The nature of their office will now begin to customize their dealings. You will find out that this guy will find out that an unusual grace for prayer has come on him. Whereas they used to be prayer partners. Now they no longer can be prayer partners because this guy is tired. He has tried for two hours and he wants to go and read. He's thinking of his MSc in UK. Whereas this guy, after two hours, he wants to go and a new vision starts. And he stretches for another three hours. The nature of what they are becoming defines the level of the training. Are we together? There are things this guy would be at liberty to do and God will keep quiet. When this guy wants to do it, God will say, no, hold on. The nature of what you are becoming prohibits you. It may not be seen, but it's a prohibition. You are like a Nazarene. It's a covenant your life is subscribing to because of what you are becoming. Please listen very carefully. You have to get what I'm teaching you. So this guy, because of this experience, watch this. Chances are that in God dealing with him, because he is going to be a prophet, God is not going to teach him anything about financial prosperity. Are we together? He's not even going to teach him anything about excellence and administration. It cannot be captured in the details of his dealings. God will focus on the area that becomes what, what we call the signature of his call. There will have to be an outspoken dimension of the spirit. The nature of God's dealings is that God will reveal a dimension of himself to him. Now watch this. This is where the danger is. By the time this guy comes to the pulpit and now starts using his dealing as the template, the theology upon which he mentors members, it will be destructive. He may be a sincere person, but death will start. Because only those who are called according to his pattern will benefit from that sermon. Please listen. This is how error spreads in the body. It is possible that because God is calling me into a unique call, God can give me restrictions and say to be most effective, you can't have more than three children. This is my requirement. If you have more than three children, the, the burden of fatherhood will not allow you to be effective. And I have gauged you and seen that three children is the best are you getting the point now? That is a personalized dealing. 
You cannot make a doctrine out of it. It does not pass the test to be a doctrine. That means that it cannot be a spiritual template for mentorship. I show you where we men of God have sincerely been destroying people. So we are molding people who are not caught along our angles. And we are creating unwritten rules that makes them know that if you don't follow this pathway, you are wrong. It's not so. The pathway you know is not the only pathway. It's the pathway that was defined for you. What could be wrong? Why do we have sincere people who continue to feel guilty because they didn't see any vision? And based on the theology that was communicated, your spiritual growth should be measured by the visions and dreams you have. So said the man of God, the man of God who mentored you. And since that is not your experience, what God is leading you to, you begin to fight it. Because you have been forced that the template followed by your mentor is the ultimate representation of God. It's a serious error. You don't have to be evil. Any one of us can become a victim. And I'll tell you why. The bias that comes, you have to be emotionally connected to your experience to carry the grace in that experience. So every time you stand to teach, the, the blessings you have received from your experience, you want the people to have it. And that is sincere. And Satan comes and uses your compassion like he used Peter. He came through Peter's compassion. I, 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 I don't know if, 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 if we are... So Jesus told Peter, Satan has desired to sift you. And he used the window of your sincere compassion. Chances are that if I had the privilege to be raised by a father who was an entrepreneur and a very great man, I had the opportunity to have business savvy at a very young age. Are we together now? And by age 17, 18, I'm a multi-millionaire. By the time I hear someone who went through all kinds of things, I look at the person and I say, oh dear, I really pity you. Because life is only principles. When this guy is praying and all of this, I said, look, there is no devil anywhere. The only devil is the devil in your brain. It's not my fault. Because the nature of the leverage I received, listen, someone had paid the price for me. And so it made it easy. So in my Christian experience, the value of prayer and consecration was not captured there. So when I'm mentoring people, I would trivialize the issue of prayer. I would trivialize fasting. I would say, well, what is fasting for? What is prayer for? And I'm the only one who is succeeding. Because that template was carved out for my uniqueness. What then is the excellency of the Holy Ghost given to individuals? He will guide you. Not as a group. There is a path, a mark for your destiny. And it is the assignment of the Spirit of God to guide you. An exact body of truth are located for your destiny. Listen down. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, eternity's holy King. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, Whose words brings up the evening. But I can't deny By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the seasons. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your pleasing. Listen, if you pay attention to what I'm telling you, it will not make you hate anybody, but you will be an agent of balance. You will know where to run to your house and say, I know where the problem is now. When we got born again, not that the pastor was bad, but the system of mentorship 
is why darkness prevails over this family. The most powerful prayer warrior prays for 15 minutes because he's following the path of the business mogul who has everything working in place. And remember, your assignment is to be an apostle or to be a prophet. And there is a requisite level of spiritual investment you must make per day to attain unto that. Per day is added. If it does not match up after a threshold period, you will repeat it again. So when everybody is praying one one hour, you can finish and you want to turn your plate upside down. God said, I hope you know you are going seven days. He said, Lord, why me? And he says, have you forgotten the prophecy your mother told you? What did the man tell her before you came? The person who is your prayer partner, the problem he's praying for, you are the answer. So you can't pray the same hour just because you started together. You are part of the people he is part of the people you were sent to. There are people because of their assignments. You can't enter a relationship twice. God will prohibit you. Any guy that there's nothing like trial and error. Say, Let's see how things move. The nature of the child that must come out from your womb. There, there is a preservation. Are we together? And like Abimelech, when you look at a particular lady, say, my God, I'm considering you will have a dream that night. God will say, don't near this girl. You can choose anybody around, but there is prophecy. There's too much on this destiny and the womb that that child will bring for you to be careless and in the name of love destroy that person. Now, when that person is teaching about relationship, this is going to be the person's template. If you ever have more than two or three people, you are not in the will of God. That's not true. It was a template defined because of the nature of what you are carrying. Imagine that Mary was going to teach about fertility. Do you know what the theology of Mary will be? Men are not very needed. Ghosts and spirits can get people pregnant. And she has the results. How many people in the Bible did the Holy Ghost get pregnant? When you build doctrines out of personalized dealings, listen very carefully. I, there's no time I would have shown you a man in the Bible, sir. When Jesus was speaking to the seven churches in Asia Minor that represented the Catholic Church, the Universal Church prophetically, he spoke about a particular prophet called Balaam. Huh? When you read from Numbers 22 to 24, you will see what the Bible calls the error of Balaam. What was the error of Balaam? Balaam was called to, by Barak to, prof, to prophesy against the nation of Israel. And he, he knew that God was not in him, with him. Why? Because there was a formation of Israel, the ark being in the center, and that formation was a spiritual system of fortification. The ark being in the center and they were all stationed according to their tribes. That spiritual formation cannot allow a cause to work. So he knew that trying to cause them would be a waste of time. When you study there, Balaam used divination. And when he tried, it still didn't work. And he told them, he said, you know what, I've done my best. And they said, I know your problem. They motivated him with a lot of money. They sent their nobles. They used influence. They said, come, there has to be a way. You are not a small prophet. We know you. You just don't want to do this thing. And he was motivated. And then, they now sent nobles with money. And he was now in that error. And then eventually, when you study, Balaam used a strategy. He said, I can't cost them, but I can share with you something that will make them cost themselves. He says, the only way you can cost these people is to make them do something against God. And so he said, 
tried to introduce a system of immorality there and you will corrupt the spiritual formation and by themselves they will be caused. Balaam. Now listen very carefully. When Apostle Peter was teaching this, Apostle Peter called it the way of Balaam. So it had moved from an error, as you know theologically, to the way, a methodology. It started as a man's weakness. But now it had grown, it is now a formula. By the time you get to Revelation, it's called the doctrine of Balaam. So God told me, you will never have a church in the U.S., for instance. That is a personalized dealing. It's a way, an error. I can now begin to preach. There's no need having churches overseas. It becomes a methodology. Why? Because I will mentor people after that template. They will write books after that template. Bible schools will adopt it in honor of the mentor who taught it. And then after 10, 15 years, Nobody can argue with it again. You don't have the power to argue with it. The people that have received it are too influential for you to fight it. Then a time comes when it becomes the fabric of a Bible school. That means the, the, the teaching, the entire Bible school was taught from that error. Hallelujah. Is God helping us tonight? The danger of personalized dealings. There are certain things that are my personal covenant with God. I will never teach it in the open. These are things between me and God. They are the preservers of the grace upon my life. It's an ordinance between me and God. To say, son, I understand the path I'm bringing you to. And based on where I'm taking you, I will create a formula and a set of disciplines. It's not convenient, but that is the price you have to pay to host this level of grace. The jurisdiction of mentorship must be scripture, not experience. Experience only forms supporting structures. When the foundation is there. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise. Are we together now? Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Please give it to us. Let's hurry up. Goodness. You know, I've not even covered. You see, eh? conferences like this. Real believers meeting takes time more. Our fathers, you know those days, Kenneth E. Hagin, they will spend 30 days, non-stop. If you don't know God, they will, you wonder what are they teaching. This is what happens to a preacher who doesn't know God. If all you do is to download messages, you will be tired. You can't have the grace to exhaust three hours. It's not very easy to steal information like that and remember. It must be your experience. Where are we? Acts chapter 20. Please read it with me. One, two, go. And now, brethren, I commend you to and to stop, stop, stop. This is Apostle Paul, accredited and approved by God, and also approved by miracle signs and wonders, approved by the threefold cord of the church that can eat, not be easily broken. He received the hand of fellowship. His apostolic calling was validated by the appearance of Jesus. Please keep that scripture there. He's, it's like a handover service. And he's saying, look, I am concerned about your safety. And I need to show you the things that, do, that define the jurisdiction of safety. I commend you first to God. Number two, to the word of his grace. And he says it is able to build you up, number one. Number two, to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Experiences are risky. The margin of error there is very wide. I can have an experience that is 60% revelation and 40% flesh. And because I'm still growing spiritually, as at the time I'm teaching it, I will not know the flesh is 40%. So I will teach everything together. 
When you now learn it and you are suffering from it, I will now grow later and discover that what I taught you before, that you have believed so much and you have mentored others is not correct. Is God helping us? It's a revival series. We came to be challenged, to be more circumspect with our approach. The idea is not to run away from people. The idea is not to be sarcastic. But the idea is to understand that the surest security is the jurisdiction of Scripture allotted to help men know God. Experiences are powerful. Let me tell you, by the grace of God, and you know this, I live in the realm of experiences. You see that? The number of things I see per day, I say it with all humility. If many people see it, it will be enough to write a book. You cannot imagine how many things I've seen from the time I started preaching. It takes discipline to see so much and yet be quiet. Moses was a prophet and his mouth did not open. When small of his spirit came on 70 elders, not one of them could keep quiet. Yet, one man was holding all that and he was quiet. Every dimension of the spirit is, is garnished with self-control. Anything minus self-control will bring misuse. You need self-control. There are doctrines that we have brought in church that sabotage the will of man. And when you study the ordinances of man with God, alongside redemption, there are fundamental rights that God gave man. Not the new man in Christ, man. Man as an entity, there are things that God gave man. And any preacher that tries to take it from you is, is bewitching you. One of it is the right to choose. This is something that God gave man. You don't have to be born again. Once you are a man, it is part of God's gift to you. You don't have to be born again. Once you are a man, it is part of God's gift to you. You don't